Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, my faith grows stronger, and I learn how to be an overcomer. Uh, the scripture says that when we're born again, as newborn babes, we should desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. When you're born again, just like in the natural, you're born a baby, not a fully developed adult. Well, spiritually, you're born a baby as newborn babes. Did you hear that phrase? And desire the sincere milk, not steak, <laughs> milk of the word so that you can grow. And then the scripture also in other places talks about uh, by reason of age, you can discern and be able to take strong meat or strong food, solid food. So um, the reason why we have faith school, the reason why you, ha you should have church and other types of ministry and you should feed on the word on a regular basis is because you need to grow up, grow up. Uh, help your neighbor just look at them and say, you need to grow up. <laughs> And we're talking to you too. <laughs> and me too. We all need to grow up into the fullness of the stature of the anointed Christ. Hallelujah. Being like Him, thinking like Him, speaking like Him, praying like Him, having faith like Him, living the overcoming victorious life like He did on the earth as our example. So, uh, what's that got to do with faith? Well, faith's part of it. Growing up in love, growing up in faith, growing up and being led by the Spirit, then the fruit of the Spirit is evidence of that growth. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Does that sound like a stable, fully developed person who has got, got it under control? patient, walking in love, got joy, got faith. Can you see that? Just growing up solves a lot of problems, right? It does. I mean, you grow up a little bit and, you know, I hadn't thought about a pacifier and I don't know. <laughs> Is that right? I mean, I don't remember when I ever, or uh, my, my binky or my banky, I, right? And, and maybe I cried about that decades ago, right? Maybe I did. I don't remember. Probably did. But, but uh, thankfully, I grew up. Well, why are you talking about that, Brother Keith? Because a lot of what people are upset about and crying about is just as trivial as that pacifier. Now, to the little one who's getting weaned, they don't see it as trivial. Right to them, it is life and death. I mean, it is, right? It is just awful. But it's because of their tiny life experience. They don't know what is really a big deal. They think this is life and death. And that's what happens with people spiritually. They, you know, you see people, you know, they uh, get a flat tire on the way to work and they lose their joy for a, a month. You know, they're just like, oh, I can't deal with it anymore. Well, that's acting like a little baby who has no faith or somebody slights you a little bit or, or somebody posted something not nice <laughs> about you on their site or, or whatever. Who are they? What do they know? What does it matter? Who will remember what they said 100 years from now? Hmm? See, what we're saying is people are getting upset, even people of God, getting so upset and so worked up over stuff that is just nothing. But the reason you think it's so big is because you're such a baby. So let's quit being whiny babies <laughs> and let's grow up in Him. Somebody said, let's grow up in Him. Let's... Let's grow. How do you grow? Well, one thing is you need to be fed. Is that right? You need to be fed some good, 
nutritious spiritual food. Now, somebody telling you what they think about social reform and, and injustices and rights and privileges and all this kind of stuff and political, that's not going to build you up spiritually. That's not going to help you. You read, and I don't care how famous an author they are and how brilliant they're supposed to be and all their theories and all their ideas, it will not cause you to grow up spiritually. You can have been born again 78 years ago and still be a whiny baby spiritually. Never grew up because you hadn't fed properly and you hadn't exercised yourself in the things of God. That's sad. How many think an 80-year-old baby is sad? That's sad. Still getting upset over the least little nothing stuff thinks everybody's supposed to wait on you hand and foot night and day when by reason of time you should be helping babies grow up because you're no longer the baby. And you don't want to go to a church that babies you for 40 years. We should only baby the babies, right? The ones that really are babies. They got born again last week. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They really are babies. And they need to be treated with some extra attention and some extra patience and that kind of thing. But the, the rest, you know, as time goes by, let's grow up. Amen. Come on, somebody say, let's grow up. Let's, let's, grow up. let's grow up. Father, we thank you for revealing these truths to us and helping us. You are so, so good. What we need to develop and grow up, we ask you to reveal it to us, remind us of it, show us the steps to take and grace us to be able to do it, and we purpose to cooperate with your spirit and become not just a, a spiritual infant that d depends on everybody else and takes up everybody else's time and attention, but to grow up and be uh, an older child that can handle some spiritual responsibility that can work together with you in the ministry to accomplish the Great Commission and get this thing done. We make ourselves available and we thank you for helping us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's, I, I elaborated on it, but that, that's part of what we mean by learning how to be an overcomer is growing up. Somebody confess it by faith. Say, I'm growing up. I'm growing up. I'm growing up. Well, like we said, one way that you do that is you feed on the right things. Well, the perfect thing to feed on is the Word of God, the anointed Word of God. We've been camping on these individual cases of healing for some time. Let's continue today in the seventh chapter of Mark in our study of the healing of the deaf man with the speech impediment. Mark 7, 31, again departing from the coast of Tyre and Zidon, he, uh, Jesus, came to the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis, the region of the ten cities. And they bring to him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech, and they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude. Now, we've camped on that the last couple of classes, and I think we need to continue to do so because um, there are a number of people who have endeavored to believe for things, and it didn't happen. It didn't work out. People that have endeavored to minister things to folks, and it, they didn't have good results. And um, there are reasons why. It doesn't mean that what you're heard and believed isn't true. It just means there's other truths that you're not taking into consideration with it. Uh, I know the first time, and we're talking back, oh dear me, uh, 45 years ago plus or something, one of the first times I endeavored to minister faith, to teach it. Um, was in my local church that was not a faith church, not a word church, but I had found out uh, through uh, other ministry about being redeemed from the curse of the law. And I was so excited about it. And uh, 
Then uh, a, a couple of weeks after I found out about this, uh, the uh, ministers there asked me if I wanted to lead Wednesday night uh, and teach for a few minutes. Well, I hadn't done that before. And I thought, well, man, this has got to be God. I mean, because I got this great revelation, right? <laughs> and then there is this opportunity that I hadn't had before. Now, now green doesn't describe what I was. I mean, <laughs> I was beyond green. I, <laughs> but I had learned a couple of scriptures. I had found out that according to Deuteronomy 28, sickness and poverty and 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 confusion and oppression, all of that were part of the curse of the law. And according to Galatians 3.13, we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. I figured that would preach, man. That's, that's, I was certainly jazzed about it. So, uh, so I got up and, and I shared that and, and I got to the point where everybody's supposed to shout about it. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Probably been going seven minutes. And, and they just sat there. Not a response. And I thought, huh. <laughs> you know, so I, I said it again with more emphasis. <laughs> and they just like, just sat there. And finally, one, one of the deacons raised his hand and stood up and gave a testimony about how God put sickness on him and taught him some things. And then another one stood up and gave a testimony about how God made their uh, relatives sick and, and they died. And, and, and one after another, and, and then the pastor got up and he said, Keith, are you saying we don't have to be sick? I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he just shook his head. And the deacon shook their head. And I thought, whew. I'm done, you know. So I just had to go sit down. And later on that night, trying to go to bed, I, I thought, Lord, that didn't turn out very good. That, what did I, did I do something wrong? What did I, and just, just like that, part of it was replayed in my mind and the Lord spoke to my heart. I don't mean to heard a voice, but he spoke to my heart. He said, uh, Keith, uh, uh, these folks, uh, like you, are new to this. This is new to you. And he said they needed a half a teaspoon of faith. That sounds like a baby, doesn't it? Mm. Right? They needed a half a teaspoon. And you tried to give them a whole truckload. <laughs> Everything you ever heard about it in 10 minutes. <laughs> Well, I didn't know. I had no experience, you know. And uh, I thought, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> and then he said, and besides that, I heard myself, I heard the pastor say, Keith, are you saying that uh, we don't have to be sick anymore? I said, yeah. And the Lord said, wrong. I said that. Not you. I said that. He said, they don't mind arguing with you. Arguing with me is different. Come on, can you see that? He said, I'm the one that said, I redeemed you from the curse of the law. And all these things are in the curse of the law. He said, don't, don't take a responsibility for my word. Bring it back to me. Right? Say, well, no, the word said that. That's a valuable lesson, isn't it? And you want to do that with all of your friends and acquaintances. This is valuable uh, information. You know, I learned it kind of the hard way. You could learn it the easy way. There, there is something better than learning from your own mistakes. It's learning from other people's mistakes <laughs> and not repeating them. It is. And, uh, and so with your family, your friends, your acquaintances, your co-workers, whatever, you get something exciting from God and from the Word. I know you just want to go tell them all of it and get them as, as excited as you are right now. But they may not be ready for that. And you may have grown some so that you're not just a baby baby like they are. You've actually gone to the Gerbers. <laughs> you know, you got, right? You're not just milk only. You, you're, you're on some soft food. <laughs> when all they can handle is a little milk. 
Now, this is not some, some notion I'm coming up with. It's in the Word. It's in 1 Peter. It's in 1 Corinthians 3. It's in numerous. It's in Hebrews. It's in other places. We're born again spiritual babies. And then if, only if, we're fed the proper things and we act on it and start exercising our spiritual muscles, our faith, then you grow up. You start growing. And if you keep getting fed well and you keep exercising, you grow all the way up and you start acting like Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You start thinking like him. You start talking like him, praying like him, believing like him. That is the goal. And all of us have made mistakes, but forgetting those things that are behind and pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. In who? In Christ Jesus. What is that high mark? What is that prize? What is that bullseye? It's being like him. It's being matured and developed in Christ Jesus. And so, uh, uh, you know, a good end to that story, uh, I don't know, a year and a half or so uh, later, they actually asked me to come back <laughs> and, and do a week meeting. And I did and a bunch of people got filled with the Spirit, and a bunch of people got hit. It, it, it ended up pretty good. Yeah. But that night, I felt like a big failure. And the Lord helped me to see one of the principles was, He said they needed about a half teaspoon of that. And you tried to give them basically everything you knew in my immaturity. And so that applies to every believer, not just ministers, every believer. You want to be led by the Spirit as to what you say to people and how much you try to get into on any one given time. Uh, because how many understand, little bitty babies, you put even a big spoon in, they're going to spit maybe half of it out, right? Why? You just, you're trying to move too fast, Right? You got to slow it down. You got to reduce the amount, and you got to slow, slow your roll, right? <laughs> At your spiritual roll. So, thank God for growing up and developing. In this passage, Jesus got the person away from the multitude because obviously that was a hindrance. In the eighth chapter, when in verse 22 he came to Bethsaida. And they bring the blind man to him, besought him to touch him. Verse 23, he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of, out of the town. The scripture said in 1 Samuel, the Lord said, They that honor me, I will honor. They that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Jesus said, blessed is he who's not offended at me. So are you, will you experience the blessing if you are offended at him? Well, no, if you're going to be blessed the same, whether you're offended or not offended, he'd have never said that. Blessed is the one who's not offended. Well, healing is part of the blessing. Deliverance is part of the blessing, all these things. And so that's why we see in that sixth chapter of Mark, the fifth verse, that in his own hometown, Jesus could there do no mighty work. We'd say he couldn't. He couldn't do any mighty works. That just upends some people's theology. But come on, believe the Bible more than you believe your religion. Amen. Right? Amen. People say, well, I got a right to my beliefs. Not if you're a Christian. Now, if you're not going to be a Christian, of course, obviously you can believe anything you want to in this world. But if you're a Christian, you're supposed to believe what the Christ said, yeah. right? And yeah. what the Word says, not just make up your own beliefs and ignore what he said. You know, Jesus said to the, some of the most religious people of his day, he said, you have made the Word of God of no effect by your traditions. You've replaced the Word with your traditions. We don't want to do that. And, and you'll have to be disciplined and, and have some humility and teach, teachableness about you in order to do that. You'll have to, first of all, hear some word, not just what somebody thought and somebody said somebody thought about the word. You want to hear what it said. 
And you want to know it well enough to know when somebody changed part of it, right? Or somebody left off part of it. Elsewise, you're going to be easily deceived, easily misled. Oh, child of God, if you don't have a Bible, get you one today. Are y'all with me, class? And put your nose in it and feed on it regularly. Because it is your protection. It is your life. Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The Proverb 4 said, my son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let, let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart because they are life to those that find them. And they are health or medicine to all their flesh. If you respect the Word of God enough, that Word will heal you. Amen. Did you hear that, class? Amen. If you respect the Word of God enough, that Word will deliver you from debt and from lack. If you respect the Word of God enough, that Word will deliver you from heaviness and depression and oppression and confusion. Do you believe it, child of God? The scripture said he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, somebody say praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Back up with me to the fourth chapter here of Mark. And notice what Jesus said in verse 23. He said, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Now, he's not just talking about everybody that has the physical ability to hear, because that would have been most of the crowd there. So what's he talking about? There's something spiritual that affects whether you hear or whether you don't. Because hearing is not just a matter of sound waves bouncing off your eardrum. We're talking about hearing with discernment, hearing with understanding, grasping what you heard, understanding what you heard. He goes on to say, verse 24, that tells you a key to having an ear to hear. Take heed what you hear. Another one of the writers said, take heed how you hear. Both of these are recorded. Take heed what you hear. Take heed how you hear. And you can see that here. For with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. There are people, a lot of people sadly, they see things like this faith school class, this broadcast, like church, like meetings. and meetings. They see it as a total waste of time. They don't know why anybody would bother watching or listening. Well, that's because they have no respect. Can you see that? No respect for the Word. And even if they think they believe in God, very little respect for God because if you, if you have respect for somebody, you should want to know what they had to say. Right? And you should care about what they said. And so it's just being religious to say you have faith in God, but you don't care and don't respect about what He said. The scripture talks about the Lord has exalted his word uh, above so many things and that he, Jesus is actually the word made flesh. And in the beginning uh, was the word. Hallelujah. Uh, the word made everything that has been made. You can't overestimate, you can't overemphasize the importance of the Word. Not just a book with ink and paper, but the Word. See, we, we got, you know, we speak English. That's not the only language. And the original languages were not English. So it's not just the letters, the ink, the paper. It's the thought that was in the original Word. And that thought came right out of God. Oh, hallelujah. And in God's thoughts are life. God's thoughts are light and truth and life. And the truth will make you free. Can you say amen? 
And that was where the giant turnaround came. And Phyllis, my wife, and, and my life back decades ago is when we found out through other wonderful ministries the importance of the Word of God. I mean, we grew up around people that went to church, and we had Bibles in our, in our houses that had uh, our family tree written in them, you know, and, and were big and nice, looked good on the coffee table. But we didn't spend time in them. And if somebody preached something that wasn't right and said it was Scripture, we wouldn't have known. We'd have just said, hell, they're preachers, they're supposed to know. But no, we saw the importance, just like Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Job said, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Can you see why they didn't get results in his own hometown? Because here is the word made flesh saying the anointing is on me to minister to you. And they go, who does he think he is? Oh, come on. Can you see that? Just shut it down. The Bible talks about don't quench the spirit. Can you see that's exactly what happened? I mean, the Spirit of God is there, ready to go. Jesus is there, ready to go. They could have had healings and deliverances and miracles coming out the windows. Is that right? In his own hometown. But no, they got a cop in attitude and go, well, who does he think he is? And just quenched the thing, just, just smothered it, just shut it down to the point where Mark 6, 5 says, Jesus couldn't do any mighty works there. Well, if it's true concerning the master, it's true concerning any of us, right? And so we need to be aware of it. And I like what it says in Matthew 13, talking about the same thing. It said, he marveled because of their unbelief. And then he went round about all their cities and villages teaching <laughs> and preaching. That, is that the solution? How, when you got no faith, what do you got to do? Come to faith school, right? Here's some teaching and preaching. Get that nasty unbelief out of you and get filled with some wonderful, confident, expectant faith. And then you'll see miracles too. Our time's up again today, but we'll see you again tomorrow. Come back soon for some more Faith School. I've got a victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today. But you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.